Welcome back to Tales of Anosmia. I'm Jules, and I am a Nosmic. I have no sense of smell. Earlier this month, a paper was published in the academic journal Neuron, which was relating to having no sense of smell. And it was a bit weird. Made the rounds on the Facebook groups, had an article on BBC News about it, so... I thought I would say a little bit about that paper, because it's, it's weird. There hasn't been an awful lot of research about anosmia, there's a lot of stuff that really should have been looked into by this point, but just hasn't. So sometimes things will just fall out of a study and everyone just goes, huh, don't know why that's the result. <laughs> so basically, to summarise the paper, there are some left-handed women who do not have the olfactory bulbs in the brain and yet have a fully functional sense of smell. From what we currently understand of how the sense of smell works, this does not make sense. If you don't have the part of the brain that receives and interprets smell information from your nose, how, how does that work? <laughs> so this paper came about from a completely unrelated study. They were conducting some MRI scans on people's brains for completely different research. And they came across this woman who, when they scanned her brain, didn't have the olfactory bulbs. And yet her sense of smell worked fine. So. They then started doing some different research with her. <laughs> For part of this research, they were gathering a control set of data. So some more scans of people's brains that were all normal brains to compare against hers to try and work out what was going on. While gathering this control data, not even 10 people later, they found another woman without olfactory bulbs who could smell. So most of the research that was in this paper was about these two women that they'd found whilst looking at MRI scans and one congenital anosmic who didn't have the olfactory bulbs and was also unable to smell. So to kind of look at what these sort of differences were between these brains and why one person could smell and one person couldn't. They also looked through a massive database of over a thousand MRI scans of different people's brains to have a look and see if they could find any more examples of this, and they did. In fact, I'll just check my numbers, it was in 0.6% of women and 4.25% of left-handed women. What's the connection with being left-handed? Excellent question! <laughs> One aspect of this study that was really interesting was that they had these women conduct a test where they're given some smells and they have to describe them. And interestingly, the way that each of them described them was quite similar. So possibly this indicates that by having no olfactory bulbs, it gives you a different experience to other people like the same kind of experience to each other though, like the, the sense works in a different way. So what are the implications of this study? Well, what the scientists who conducted it have suggested is that it may well be possible to help any children who are born without a sense of smell to regain some ability, if not completely regain their sense of smell, if it's caught early enough, whilst the brain is developing and making all these new connections. The plasticity of the brain, the way that it can change and adapt, is very impressive. So this kind of indicates that some people have been able to do this on their own without assistance. So if you screen babies for their ability to smell, just like we do for hearing and sight, maybe then it'll be possible to help out some kids to develop a sense of smell and have one of their senses back. They suggest using some form of odour therapy or smell training where you're exposed to different strong particular aromas and regular exposure and focusing on it can help to retrain the brain. I want to talk about this for a couple of reasons. Partly because there is so little research on anosmia and it's really exciting when you see something come up that's interesting as much as anything rather than just confirming something we already knew but didn't have peer-reviewed scientific rigorous evidence of. So seeing something new is really interesting. <laughs> but also I saw a lot of discussion of this going around online in the various groups that I'm in to do with anosmia and there was a lot of misinformation being thrown around so it's nice to summarise, hey this doesn't mean that we can fix everyone's sense of smell, this doesn't mean if you're left-handed you should be able to smell and if you say you can't you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> we don't quite understand all of this but it's cool new research and maybe in the future fewer kids will have to grow up without their sense of smell, which is kind of cool. Before you go, I would really like to do an anosmia Q&A video at some point soon in the next month, so if you've got any questions, either as an anosmic or someone who is not anosmic, any questions for an anosmic person, please stick them in the comments and I will hopefully get to it in the next Tale of Anosmia video. Links to the paper that I've been talking about will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon!